people with ADHD save dollars. Good morning. Hello, hello. Hey, Tiffany, how are you? 
hope you're doing well this morning. It's time for animation critique time. <clears throat> All right, if there's anything anybody wants to look at, click the link in the, uh, sorry, I'm getting a message. Uh, click the link in the description below. Put whatever you want in there. And we will take a look. I've already got one in there. Uh, so this is from Animation One. Hey Bryce, how are you? this all right Michelle so a couple of issues and <clears throat> it's gonna be kind of the same on each of these on each of these jumps So the first thing that I would do is you need to look at your timing. It's really slow right now. So when we jump up off of this, see how slow it gets? <clears throat> the other thing, so, so you gotta remove some time, but also at the same time, what I would recommend doing You're roughly starting about here. Your midpoint is here. Let's make sure, make sure things aren't too loud here. Let me know if you have trouble hearing me or if the music is too loud. Um, so you're not getting up high enough. As you can see, when you get to this middle point, see how you stall in the air, and then it's all, all foot, and then you go again. So you need to get a little bit higher. And then in that case, your timing would change, right? Because right now, you're only getting up here. It feels really slow. You also get stuck in a certain position and you end up pivoting or rotating in that same position. And we wanna move through, like the hips or the ball should act like a bouncing ball, right? The bouncing ball doesn't go and get stuck at the top and rotate and then come back down. So we need a nice arc that's going on there. So right now it feels too slow. It's also a little bit too low. We need to get a full jump going. Okay, so then we can look at your push off. So again, it's a little bit slow coming through here, so that's gonna change some things. But you've got your stretch here, heel is coming off the ground, we've got our toe in contact, but then once we leave the ground, again, a couple of these issues are all at this, happening at the same time, so they're kind of related. It's going really slow, so we see this foot, and the foot, you know, we've got the toe there, and the heel has come up off the ground. But this relationship here, that bend, implies, implies pressure, right? There's, we're pushing down or pushing to get off of the ground, but when you release that pressure, what happens, right? That, that bend at the toe to the foot goes away. And once you're in the air, sometimes it can relax, so it bends the opposite way. 
but the issue is when it oh you sent me a message Tiffany okay do I need to check it now um, the issue is when that bend stays like that but then it comes up off the ground it looks fake right it doesn't look like it looks like there's still pressure but we're in the air so it looks off so it's really important once you leave the ground that we pivot from the toe we don't want the toe to ever come back it's about sharing sharing my live stream oh okay hold on we need that to release so we push off right that's the important thing Yeah, Tiffany, you can post this wherever you want. <laughs> I don't mind one bit. And I'll critique anybody. It's not, it's not just UTD students. Um, we went over to, Todd and I went over to Louisville's Career Center uh, last Thursday. And, had, <laughs> and somebody asked, like, hey, can, is it just for UTD students or can anybody? And I was like, yeah, go ahead. I don't mind. Uh, and if there was so much that it goes past an hour, then I would stay and keep on going. <clears throat> we used to do it for two hours when, it, when we did it in person. Ran it from 10 to, 10 to 12. All right, anyways, so we've got to fix that toe. When it comes off of the ground, you need the release of pressure. And I would recommend doing two things here. So right now you've got the foot control that's down there and the heel is coming up based on that ball roll control. And when this happens at the correct speed, it'll it'll pop off the ground, right? And what I would recommend is as soon as you pop off of the ground like here, turn off that heel control uh, I don't I forget what it's called like the ball roll or whatever turn it off put it back to zero and then rotate the foot using that control because what will happen is you're gonna end up using you're gonna have two controls that are fighting or at least controlling where the heel is and I think it's easier to only have one control so put the heel back down and then rotate that IK foot control to the position that it needs to be in. And then you can counter the toe to rotate back in the other direction. If all, if all of that makes sense. Okay. All right, so then we've got this. There's where your heel is hitting. Once the heel makes contact, the foot comes down and we pivot from the heel. What you don't want is this hitting and then our foot sliding back, which is what we've got here. So pick one or the other. If you want it to st stop there, then that's where it needs to hit. If you want it to hit here, then it needs to stop. The foot, foot needs to come to rest there and pivot down, okay? So after that, it's kind of the same thing, right? We've gotta, we've gotta get that foot pointing back like it's actually pushing off. You also want that heel to come up through here you can really see your arc. Hey, Kyle. <laughs> Good to see you or hear you or read your chat, I guess. I'm not I'm not seeing you or hearing you. <laughs> All right. So, once this gets up here, you see how it kind of scoots across straight. Again, we need to accentuate that arc. <laughs> okay, so let's get that up there. And then once we get to here, we want to see that straight happen. We 
want that heel coming up. It's important to get the straight because the straight will uh, imply, you know, some force. Otherwise, it feels a little bit, it's, it's just not as strong. And then again, when we combine that, when we combine the bent leg, we combine the foot not really pushing, the heel coming up and the feel of that push with the slow timing, what it sort of looks like is there's a string attached to it and someone is picking it up rather than that leg generating its own force and push. Okay. And then when we land, we want that cushion, the squash, all of that happening. That's it, Michelle. <laughs> you know, just do that and you'll be, you'll be great. All right, let's see if there's anything else. All right, Bryce has got something. Kyle, are you still doing Animation Mentor? And if you are, how's it going? Hey, you're here, Michelle. I thought I was. I thought you just dropped it in the folder, and that was it. Good to uh, uh, good to have you here. If you have any questions about any of that, please feel free to ask. All right, Bryce. My initial impression is it's just a little bit too fast. So let's go through. We'll analyze that first jump. So we got your squash going. I think you can turn on your uh, the squash that you have uh, on the ball. I think you can blend it through this squat down because it kind of gets there and it pops. Like you get a big pop right there. I think you can kind of ease that in uh, in this down position, through this down position. The other thing you can also do is right now you're going straight down. We can round that arc out so that, you know, we do that versus or that. Okay? The other thing that I would do, eight months left, that seems like a long time. I feel like you've been doing it longer, Kyle. So the other thing, Bryce, is we get this one. Hey, Greg Whitaker. I had Greg Whitaker. Whitaker. He's never going to remember me because uh, that was so long ago. I mean, it was like, how long ago? 15 years ago. Maybe more than that. He's a good dude. All right, Bryce. You get this one frame of stretch, and then we're right out of it again. So I think it's I think it's important to get a, more than one frame of stretch in there. Otherwise, you're just not going to see it. Like, you don't ever see a straight really in here. So here's where I would recommend, you know, leave it here. You could... You could have it here, and then also right in this area, you could lower that heel, and it will, not a lot, but keep lowering it, that'll start to straighten that leg out. Those are, those are the places you can just fiddle with the foot position or fiddle with the hip position, or a little bit of both. And So I would recommend at least two. I don't know that you need three, but maybe three. So when we take off here, you have a little bit of the same thing that Michelle had. Uh, reverse that toe a little bit. <laughs> yeah, it takes a lot of work. <laughs> okay, so let's look at this, Bryce. 
So on the way up. So we got pushing off one, two, three, four, five, six. So, whoops. <laughs> All right, six frames up, but you got two frames down. The two frames down is where it's getting too fast. So one, two, right? And you're in, in this bent leg. Now you might, not, you might not get to a straight with this one because you're not traveling all the way down and that's fine. You need at least one or two more frames in there. I would say two more frames. <laughs> you like to watch it live? Good. So think about your bouncing ball. From the bottom to this area and from this to this, this is where it's traveling fast, whether you're going up or down. This is where it's fast. This is where it's slowing down. So you're in this area, so it's a little bit slower, right? So right now you've got two. Let's add two more. Because it should be, you know, from here to here, it would be six. But here to here is going to be faster. So let's, let's err on the side of of a little bit more. So two frames in there. And as you come through, you can stretch that leg just a little bit more. Just a little bit. So when you land here, what I would recommend doing is your arc is doing this. And then you're gonna rock forward. So think about your momentum. It's gonna take you forward. So let's round out that arc. So if we watch this, you're up, you're here. You see how it's coming straight? It does this. Yeah. So we're up, we hit this low point, and then we rock like that, and then it comes back. We just wanna do this. Let's switch that color. And then meet up with it. That's your arc right through there. All right, so you get a big stretch here. So let's just watch that foot, Bryce. Let's flip it, right? So again, right now, you can look at it and the foot is doing this and the toe is slightly like that, just slightly. Again, it implies a little bit of pressure. Once you get off the ground, let's get that toe rotated in the other direction. You've got plenty of stretch on that one. Again, it might be a little bit fast, so let's watch. Yeah, it's just a little bit fast, so we want to add in. Let's, let's see how many frames on the way up. So again, we've got six frames on the way up. We've got four on the way down. It's, it's, not as, it's not as pronounced as this. So I don't know. You could, you could. I do think one of the things you need in here, because that leg is staying the same we need to stretch it out a little bit. You could almost be meeting it right there. Have the foot down right there. Watch your arc again as you come through and hit this. It does that kind of same thing where it pops up and then it rocks back and forth here. We want to carry the momentum and then rock like that. So watch this, your heel is getting a little bit off. We're squashing down, we want the heel down. So the heel and foot right here is getting a little bit off. It's a little bit early. So let's watch that at speed. Again, you might be able to add in a couple of frames in there. 
but again, watch watch your leg position on the way down because it feels like it's getting stuck, it just kind of sticks in the same position. You want the idea of shape change. So squash to stretch, back to squash. Um, it'll help that, help deal with weight, make it more interesting. So my only thing with this is uh, on the on the last jump is I think that this down through here gets a little bit even. So treat it like your bouncing ball. We're going to get faster as we go. Okay, that's it. Any questions, Bryce? What's up, Chris? Oh, Tif Tiffany, I guess uh, I guess you posted something about it. everybody's rolling in now. Sure thing, Bryce. All right, if anybody has anything they want me to look at, whether you're a UTD student or not, you can put it in that link in the description. I'll look at anything. Um, but I went through everything already. Uh, so we just had two, two today. Most of my students turned in a, their big chunk of assignments uh, last week, so a little bit lighter. Or no, I guess they did it on Monday. Otherwise, it's chatting time, I guess. <clears throat> What's going on with everybody? If you want me to look at something else... Chris, I will. I'll do whatever. Getting hot here. Lights are getting... Yes, we did. We just did those three, Tiffany. So we did the uh, Wolfman. Oh, nice. All right. Um, so we did the Wolfman, the Vampire, or Dracula, and, and the, the Creature. The, they were just tests. We are, we are done with... Uh, uh, the first Banjo Bird episode, so I just have to edit it and put it together. That's all I got to do for that. All right, Kyle. Thanks for stopping by. Um, so I just have to edit that. That's what I'm doing later today, this afternoon, and hopefully that'll be out uh, next week. We got a uh, for those for those uh, for the alum alumni. Uh, we have a new like animation suite up here at the school um, <clears throat> and Todd and I printed out an eight foot uh, background of our banjo birds so that's getting printed and then we're gonna hang it up so we're pretty excited about that I'll take a picture and put it on our Instagram as soon as that comes in hopefully any day now things here.
All right, you rushed polish. <laughs> So, did you already turn this in? And is it Samir or is it Samar? So did uh, Professor Caldwell already give you notes? All right. That's what I thought. I've been calling you S Samir, but then all of a sudden I was like... <laughs> without, without the sunglasses <laughs> emoji. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. I mean, look, it's awesome. Uh, it, this will this one will take a take a little bit to really go through and see you know initial impression is you're done So these are just suggestions, Sommer. At this point, everything is very, very good. Um, you could leave this alone and you're, you'll be fine. Um, so, so some of these are like personal things. Like if I were doing this shot, what I might do, but it doesn't make it right or wrong. It's just, a, it's just different, okay? So bear that in mind when I'm giving you notes. You don't have animation like errors that are happening. So in this, getting into this pose, I might get there a little bit faster. So it just takes, you know, it's just taken a little bit, a little bit long to get in there. So it's just like nice and slow and you might want to get into that pose a little bit faster, make it a little bit snappier. Um, Visually, I man, this is only when you slow it down. You do get a little bit of a pop that happens in the midsection. Because if you look at the shape that you're created here, and then boom, it's gone. If you sped that up, you would probably lose some of that. You'd, 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 uh, you'd be cutting some of this out. Uh, the other thing that I would say in here, just looking at that arm, like I would probably curl that curve that just slightly more. And then it might lead into that a little bit better versus the like straight and then the snap there. Okay, so that's what I see at the beginning, the first first part. Okay, so so the next part is is an idea. Again, like there's there's nothing wrong with any of this, though. You are uh, uh, all right. I changed my mind. Your elbow. <laughs> Whoop. We lost it. We lost it. There we are. So you got two frames of that. So here's here's my here's my overall idea. If you're thinking about the character and what they're going through, whoops. If 
They're chasing after this car. <clears throat> someone that they someone that they wanted has just left. Uh, we are looking up into the sky, right here. I know you don't have eyes or anything like that, or there aren't eyes, but it does. You know, we are kind of looking up in there. And then when you fall, you're never looking at it again. So we've got the hand over the face. And I feel like, especially with this part, you're really, your character is really upset and like holding on to this, but it's like, what are you upset about? And if you were looking at what you just lost or the opportunity that was missed, it might make a little bit more sense because you're just staring down into here with the hand on the face for so long and then you kind of give up but it's all all right all right in there the whole time so it's almost like you know you're waking up oh no and it's like oh crap and it's like you look up and you're like ah like, it went away. You lost your chance. If that makes sense. That's it. That's all I got. It's animated really, really, really well. Again, I don't think you would necessarily need to make any changes at all. Fix those two frames with the elbow. Um, but otherwise, you could dress this up. Give us some context of where they're at work on composition and things flowing and then put that on your reel and you're ready to go. Okay? All right, Chris. I am not a lighter, so bear that in mind. <laughs> what kind of notes are you looking for or is it just does it look good? Does it look all right? trying to get I've got a glare I'm trying to trying to work on this so again I'm not I'm not a lighter does the emotion of the scene come across uh, I, th I think so you know, he looks like he's staring off into the sky and he's slightly sad. Scared, staring off into the distance. That's kind of what I get. Um, kind of depends on what you're, what you're going for. You might... <laughs> okay. What I might recommend... You know, profile shots are, are, are tough. And if this is just a test, what I would probably try to do is maybe bring this back a little bit. It, it depends on what you're trying to communicate too, because this looks like you're staring off into the distance. But if you can bring this face even slightly back and still try to convey the same message of you're looking off into the distance. But that'll give you maybe a little bit more to play with on the face rather than just this tiny. Tiny sliver. If you left it like this, I do feel like you might need some other kind of uh, like a bounce light to give you a little bit more definition in here it could also be my lights are reflecting my lights are pretty bright it's probably not the best setup to try to critique lighting but it does for the most part on mine right now kind of treat that as a solid block of shadow so if you could get 
a little bit more fill, maybe it's fill, bounce, whatever, there. Those would be my two things. Let's look at. I mean, it does look look pretty similar. I mean, you've got basically this big mass that you don't see anything from. I'm trying to see, I don't even see like the bottom of the of the chin or anything. It kind of bleeds into the background. All right, let me remove some of this. You know, if you're trying to match that reference, it looks pretty solid. Because, I mean, you can see this bleed, this becomes one shape. This is all a shape. You get that little, uh, backlight that's happening you've got a little bit there so maybe I mean if you're trying to hit that same thing you would uh, do that but otherwise this all blends into the same this all blends in so in that case again if the goal is to, to match what you're seeing I think you're pretty close um, let's see again Sorry, I was just flipping back and forth, comparing. Um, have you talked to Professor McCord? He would be the best one to talk to. <clears throat> but again, some of it, some of it, like my note about turning the face, uh, it might be a, uh, you're telling a different story or a different moment or a different emotion, so you might not want to do that. All right, let's see if there's anything else. <laughs> I got a note about critiquing Critiquing someone's animation on YouTube, like a random person. I don't know if I want to c critique a random <laughs> person's. <laughs> All right. Well, you're doing fine, Chris. All right, does anybody have anything else? <laughs> okay. All right, let me uh, see what I can do here. So... Chris, is there one in particular? Just any of them? Can look at this. Oh. We got an ad going. Hold on.
Well, again, I don't want to like critique too much on somebody else's animation. One one of the things that I would I would really say is No, this isn't Chris's stuff. This is someone else's stuff that he that he wanted me to look at. So so the the weight the weight is off. Um the so think back to like Jurassic Park and those movies and how heavy those characters felt. Like, look at that T-Rex or whatever that thing is walking along. It's pretty light. Like, there's not a lot of up and down. You don't feel like the doom, 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 the hit of it. So, especially here. Like, watch this one. It doesn't feel heavy. Watch the tail. There's, like, no movement that's happening in it, so it doesn't have the weight. And it doesn't have to be, like, a crazy tail like we we sometimes do like a squirrel tail or something like that but that thing is heavy it's big it's massive you need that weight so watch when we come up over this rock with some of these i don't know if they're i don't know dinosaurs brontosaurus sorry watch this guy in the corner on the right side look how fast that thing's moving Watch, I think, this one right in here. Look at the mechanics. That foot is moving, but you don't feel... Again, when you've got a big creature, they really move. That thing has to shift to shift all the weight, right? When something's really heavy, let's imagine this, right? Uh, let me get in my camera. The heavier I am when I lift up my foot... I have to shift weight, right? The heavier I am, the more I've got to shift. Otherwise, it's hard for me to lift that foot up. If I don't weigh anything, right? If I'm, if I'm really, really light, I don't have to move a whole lot. I don't have to transfer weight over to something else in order for me to lift a leg, right? So it, it is a little bit different when you're dealing with a quadruped because you've got more legs. We've got two, but still... And watch this. Like, you see, there's like no left to right movement. Those feet are just, those feet are literally just picking up and going, picking up and going, picking up and going. So, that's all I would say. If that person happens to watch my YouTube channel, not killing you. You're doing fine. <clears throat> was just a question. <laughs> I don't think I'm in any danger of someone seeing my YouTube channel right now, though. So, <laughs> since we're we're normally dealing with like uh, 15 views, and he's dealing with like 120,000 views. Yeah, so anyways, just that little look that I had, I would I would say wait. And if you want to see what a really big creature looks like, go look at a Jurassic Park movie. Any of those where you've got that big old T-Rex. They feel heavy. It takes a long time. Like, boom, that weight comes down. There's a lot of force. Okay. check and see if there's anything else. I don't see anything else. Yeah, no problem, Chris. All right. Anybody have any questions? I don't have anything to work on today, so I don't I don't have a uh, I'm editing Banjo Bird, so I'm not I'm not animating today. Baby steps with the view count. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Not not too concerned about all that, but um yeah, so I don't have anything to animate today. I'm not I'm not doing that. So I'm not going to pull anything up. 
So, I can answer any questions you want to know. If you don't have questions, stand here in silence for 14 more minutes. <laughs> So, Samer, are you uh, going into Anim 3 uh, next semester? Animation learning materials. So, books are pretty... They're not, they're not generally great for animation. Uh, there's a few that I would recommend. I'm trying to see where they are here. Um, hold on. Um, you know, you've probably heard of the animator survival kit, which I think is fine. It's a, it's a pretty, uh, introductory book, um, on practical things to do, I think. And then you've got the, you know, illusion of life that deals with a little bit more theory. That's fine as well. Uh, but the ones that I think are really good are the, uh, Drawn to Life. By Walt Stanchfield. There's two, two volumes. Um, sometimes for, for, for CG animators, there's a lot of material in there that maybe doesn't necessarily apply, but I think it's still good information. But since you do, uh, Sommer, since you're doing some 2D tests, I think all of it would apply for you. So Walt Stanchfield was a, uh, I believe he taught drawing classes at Disney. Um, so he would do workshops and lectures for all of the animators there. And they took all of his notes, or he took all of his notes. I don't know if it was him or his wife after he died, I can't remember. Um, took all of his notes and put it into a book. So it's got all, all you know, tons of drawings and so again, some of it is animation related because he was talking to animators. Some of it's just drawing uh, and presenting ideas and that kind of stuff. So Drawn to Life is good. Okay, and then this one, uh, Acting for Animators, I do think has good information. Um, I don't know which I've got version three or edition three fourth edition i don't know they might be they might be on five or six <clears throat> uh got a little racket going it just keeps kicking out a new kicking out a new edition every once in a while so you have to go buy it um i think if you can get your hands on any of them most of the information is fine uh most of it probably stays the same he'll do like a little an, an analysis of movies or clips at the end, and I think that's probably what's mainly getting updated. Uh, but there's some good stuff on acting and like getting into the head. Those are the ones that I would recommend. If you are crazy, crazy, crazy into it, and you wanted to go super, super deep, uh, there was a I don't know. I don't know where it is. Uh, <laughs> there was a book that was recommended to me when I was at Animation Mentor. Um, that was called Man Watching. I, I think it's out of print, but it's on human behavior. Desmond Morris. That's who. Uh, 
Oh, you can get a paperback book on Amazon. I do think it's out of print, I think. I don't know. There you go, a field guide to human behavior. So I've gone through that. Again, it's a very old book. <laughs> I said very old. It was, it was printed when I was born. It's not that old. <clears throat> no, it is. It's an old book. And again, if you wanted to go pretty, pretty deep, you don't have to do this. Most animators don't. I've, I've done it and I have read through most of it. There's three volumes. Hold on. It is got to remember off the top of my head. I don't, I don't know where it is in my, I have a lot of stacks of books over in the corner that I haven't gone through. Uh, what is his name? Stanislavski. Stanislavski. Hold on, I'm pulling him up. He's got three, three books. And it's the ABC, the acting book series. Where is it? I don't know if I can put the a link in the thing. I'll try. All right. If you can click on that. So it, it's three books. It's like the ABCs because it's called An Actor, Be an actor Pre Prepares uh, Becoming or be Building a Character. Building a Character. And three is Creating a Role. Those are acting books. Those are like stage it's Konstantin Stanislavski, so I think it's a Russian Russian guy, and it was for like stage actors, and it's how to like get into the head of a character. That's why I say it's super deep. Uh, and it's, it's a, uh, I think they're interesting. You certainly don't need it uh, to become an animator. But if you wanted to really, really get in there, those are the things that I would recommend. I don't think you really need anything else. Uh, again, most books, videos that I've come across, they're 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 not that great. Um, as far as courses, you know, I did Animation Mentor and then I taught at Animation Mentor. There's a lot of there's a online classes or schools. You know, there's a lot of really great ones. So Animation Mentor is is a great one. Um, Though these aren't necessarily just a course, these are these are larger kind of school related. But I would say like our animation one, two, and three are all based off of uh, my experience <clears throat> going through Animation Mentor and teaching at Animation Mentor. That's what all three of the, the classes that you take here are based off of. Um, <laughs> dang, that's ancient, like a fossil. Uh, um, so what you're really getting out of a lot of those online courses is uh, access to people and critiques by people. That's what you're really paying for. Anything that you, you can find, get on, on these books or really like even in our classes, Anim 1, 2, and 3, you can probably find online. You really can. I mean, there's so much stuff online these days, and you could probably get it for free. Um, it won't be uh, uh, like organized as organized, right? You got to do a lot of searching. But what what's the important part is the critique. Um, so sometimes, again, like those those online schools, Animation Mentor. You've got Anim School. You've got I Animate. What is the other? There's Animation Collaborative, but that's an in-person in San Francisco. And maybe it's Anim Squad. A lot of those are affiliated. Like certain animators teach it from studios, teach it one or the other. But all of those are excellent because they're all taught by professional animators. Um, so if you were going for like, hey, I just want to take a class, any of those would be good. Some of them you probably can't do because they are, it's an actual full kind of school. Anyways, I don't know. You, you might be able to pick up a, a single class here or there with, with things, but what I would say is I don't think you, I don't think you really need it, Summer. Most of this stuff uh, comes down to time, like putting the time in. Your work already is very, very good. So... 
All right. Uh, let me run down this. Here. Three of them creature in them, and there's more. No more courses. Yeah, probably that's your that's your uh, that's your lineup, Sommer. Or an independent study. You could ask to do an independent study as well. All right. If motion capture data was taken and ever so slightly adjusted. Uh, so Uncanny Valley a lot of times comes from face and, and the way that that looks. Um, my experience with motion capture is, uh, is, is a little bit different than what you're going to see in the movies. I did it for a video game, so it doesn't really, you're not really getting into that. It's not detailed enough, uh, to get that far so that it looks really close, but not quite close, close enough. Um, I think... I think when you look at the way they use it these days, I don't run into that. I mean, I think the Uncanny Valley has been, like, I'm trying to think of recent examples, and I don't think too much, I, I, I don't know of too many examples that are that are in the last few years, because it's really good, like, the, the technology is really, really good these days I mean again it used to you used to have it quite a bit when they were trying to mimic humans and all of that but motion captures can be when utilized correctly I think it, it can be totally fine um, again I'm trying to think Yeah. A motion capture has its place. Uh, you know, can help speed up workflows a lot of times. But again, it takes uh, a really sophisticated system, I think, to, to be able to be used kind of on its own. And certainly there are places that can do that. Uh, your big studios can do that <clears throat> a little bit harder when you're not dealing with those really sophisticated systems, but they're getting better and better. So, but again, a lot of it comes down to the, to that face. I don't know. I don't deal too much with motion capture stuff. So, all right, Chris, Christopher Wasp. Are there concept artists or painters that I follow? Yeah, there's a there's a pile. Piles and piles. Uh, I'd have to look at my phone. Uh, if you want painters, do you mean like digital painters or real painters? That's, that's, that sounds really bad. Digital painting is real painting. I just mean like actual like <clears throat> painting, painting. Um, so here's a, here's a, uh, I can give you a few that are, uh, that do a little bit of both. So Mike Hernandez is a great landscape painter. He also works at DreamWorks as a background artist. Uh, you can look him up, uh, you can look up Mike Hernandez and you'll, you'll get him. Uh, his Instagram is Squatch gouache um, so he's great I'm about to take a class from him in January I was supposed to be doing it right now but it got delayed um, I'm taking an actual like landscape painting class not a not a I can't really digital I'm not a digital painter um, hold on just scrubbing through my Instagram there's another one I forget I forget her name believe her Instagram is Ango the Mango. Hold on, I'm going to look it up real fast. Yeah, Ango the Mango. Angela Sung, that's what her name is. Ango the Mango. Angela Sung. Um, she is kind of the same as Mike. Um, 
I can can paint traditionally. That's the word I'm using, looking for. And is a traditional uh, digital painter, and I believe works at DreamWorks, I think, or at least used to, in the movie industry, as a background environment concept type painter. Um, if you're looking for just just traditional painters, I've got a lot of those because that's what I like to do when I have free time. Uh, I'll reel off a few. So. Ellie Wilson. Uh, here's an interesting, an interesting one. That's Ellie Wilson. That's her name. But if you add on art, that'll be her uh, Instagram. Sorry, I'm kind of all over the place here with this stuff. So his name is Tristan. Tristan Art. I believe that's his Instagram, his name is, wait, I thought that was, hold on, sorry, yes, I was thinking of somebody else, so Tristan Art is one, Tad Reitz, Tad Reitz is a funny one because, <clears throat> hold on, let me get it, Tad, yeah, there we go, Tad Reitz, um, traditional painter, but his brother, He's got a brother, and his brother is a digital painter uh, for movies, and that's kind of how I I found him. He did he did a bunch of painting on on Scoob. His brother did. Um, and then lately, there's a few. Uh, here we go. All right, so. Judd Mercer. Uh, oh, what's the guy's name? I don't forget. What is that? Justin? Maybe Justin. Justin J. Winchester Art. J. Winchester Art. Uh, I know J. Winchester. He he is a little bit involved, I believe, in the entertainment industry, but he also is a painter. So I'll leave you with those two. There was what is the guy's name? Alec. Hold on. He's very good. And then the last one I'll give you is, what's his name? It's like Jeejart. <laughs> yeah, it looks like Jeejart. His name is Gareth Jones. Those are all, those are all kind of landscape, except the Ango, uh, Angela Song is, I wouldn't necessarily call her a landscape painter. The other people are landscape painters. <clears throat> Anyways, there's a few. Uh, as far as like concept, I don't, I don't follow too many concept artists. I have them on here on Instagram that I flip through. Like I just, just saw one here. Anyways, that's probably enough. All right. Harmony class is puppet only, but do you think I could convince her to let me hand draw? Uh, yeah, probably, Summer. I think if you if you wanted to, I don't think he cares. I think he just wants to find good people and plop them in there. It's just some of the stuff, you know, might not quite apply because he's going to be teaching a little bit of that puppet stuff. So like the uh, the Halloween things that we were working on together, the Wolfman and the Dracula and and uh, the creature. <clears throat> Those are some of the things that he's going to be doing, having students create. So you would kind of be forced to hand animate some of that or traditionally animate. But you can always ask. All right, so Chris, hold on, I'm getting to your thing. By the way, I want to say there's a friend. <laughs> it's indirectly improved your acting. Good. Well, if you keep on going through, I don't know if I don't know if uh, animation is your your focus, Chris. I know you can kind of you've got a range. 
Um, but Anim 2 and Anim 3, Anim 3 is all acting, so anyways. Yeah, so Samer, if you're looking for hand-drawn opportunities, really, you've got two that I can think of. It'll be with that class uh, that, uh, that Todd is teaching, or it'll be an independent study. That's probably it for right now. We're probably not going to have like a traditional 2D animation right now, or for the foreseeable future. Okay. All right. I think that's it. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for all the questions. Appreciate it. Have a wonderful weekend. <clears throat> and I think that's about it. All right, guys. So long.